I saw a couple comments of people wondering if my car is a 2022 or 2023 M4 because of the iDrive 7, iDrive 8. My car actually is a 2023 M4. The 2023s don't have iDrive 8 yet, but the 2023 M3s do. So I could see why people are a little bit confused about that. Just wanted to clarify, my car is a 2023 and I actually showed you guys all the options and the window sticker. So I'll link that below again if you guys wanna go take a look at all the options and the window sticker of my car. I did have a juicy Easter egg for you guys on my Instagram and on one of my YouTube videos. And some of you guys caught on to it. You spotted the RS5 and you asked about it. I'm actually gonna show you guys some of my favorite Instagram responses about the RS5. And in today's video, I do wanna talk about the RS5 because not a lot of people can say that they daily drove the RS5, the C63S, and the M4. In fact, I feel like I might be the only YouTuber that's done that. So I wanna take this time to tell you guys about the RS5. Also, we are not far from hitting 50,000 subscribers on the channel. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications so you can be notified when I post a new video because I am so excited that we're so close to 50,000 for the first time ever. The M4 review is coming soon, but I wanted to give you guys this really important context on the RS5 because in my M4 review, I'm gonna be comparing the M4 to both the RS5 and the AMG C63S. One of the best parts about having the RS5 was the profit we were able to make driving the car for two years. We bought the car in August of 2020 when car prices were really low during the pandemic and then sold it in February of 2022. So in that short time frame, we put over 20,000 miles on the car and we sold it for a pretty large profit. So I'm actually gonna get into the numbers in this video as well. If you guys are finance people like I am, I, this is what I love in YouTube videos is hearing the numbers. So I'm gonna lay it all out there. By the time we got the car in August of 2020, the car had been sitting on the dealer lot for over three months. The car still had two years of warranty left, two years of Audi care left from the previous owner and only had 11,000 miles. So we were able to get the car at a steal, just under $55,000. The previous owner had also done some of the things we really wanted for the car, like they PPF the entire front end, basically the front end and the mirrors. They had also already done 25% tint. Right off the bat, <laughs> the car was ready to drive off the lot for us. So it was a no brainer bought the car as soon as we realized what a great deal we were getting. The car was this beautiful Misano pearl red color and it had the black leather on the inside with the diamond stitching with the red accents and it was just, the interior was just chef's kiss and the quality is what stood out to me about the RS5 compared to, honestly, <laughs> compared to the AMG at the time. I wasn't gonna say that, but <laughs> it's the truth. So the first thing I noticed about the RS5 while driving it both in the test drive and in the first couple days of having it was how refined it was. The RS5 is a 444 horsepower V6, whereas the AMG was a 503 horsepower V8. So the power from the AMG was brutal, but the power from the RS5, it launched well because of the Quattro, but when you put your foot down after that, you expected something to happen and to go somewhere, but it just didn't. So pretty much right away, we knew that we're gonna need a tune for the car. The car was really quiet, so we knew that we're gonna need an exhaust for the car. And the car had wheels that pretty much look like Honda Accord wheels. We knew we we're gonna be needing new wheels for the car. So those were the first mods we did right away after getting the car. So for the tune, we ended up going with the APR Stage 1 tune, which brought the car to 503 horsepower, exactly in line with the AMG. So that's why it was so fun dealing the RS5 and the AMG, kind of just switching off between the two. One of the other really cool things the tune did is it changed the high end of the rev range from 6400 to 7200 RPM. So the car just felt so much more alive at the high end of the rev range. To complement the tune, we needed to get more noise out of the car. 
So we decided to go with the AWE Touring non-resonated exhaust and it was just perfect for this car. It brought out the noise of the car so the car sounded loud and good but it wasn't too loud on the inside of the car so it wasn't the bad kind of noise if you know what I mean. Now we have the tune, we have the exhaust, and you guys know it's a slippery slope. So next, of course, we had to do the wheels. For the wheels, we ended up going with the Vossen HF3s, which I felt was a perfect fit for the car. The goal was to take out all the silver pieces and put more of the gloss black pieces, which we did with the wheels. And they were extremely easy to clean because of the simple design, so that was a major plus as well. Luckily, we only had one unfortunate incident with the RS5. It's just a rule that something always has to happen, except this car, nothing's gonna go wrong with this car. But for the AMG, it was the engine mount going out. For the RS5, it was a rock that just took out the oil pan on the bottom of the car. So we're driving, rock hits the bottom of the oil pan, oil just starts spilling out and there's oil all over the engine bay and the car had to be towed to the shop. The oil pan had to be replaced and the whole engine bay had to be steam cleaned and as you guys probably can guess it was not cheap. It was around $2,500 but luckily because we had dash cam footage of what happened insurance did cover all of it so car was good as new after the fix. In summer of 2021, we decided to move to North Carolina and so we shipped both the RS5 and the AMG in a closed container across the country to North Carolina. It took about seven days to get to North Carolina, but the really cool thing was because of the Audi app, we can track exactly where the cars were the whole time, which is just like a huge relief. Like when you give away your most prized possessions, like <laughs> I'm the type of person that loves tracking where the cars are. So that was really useful with the Audi app. Thankfully, both cars arrived in the same condition when they got off the trailer and once once we got them in North Carolina it was just pure fun because we got to rip both cars on the open wide roads of North Carolina I mean look at this guys it's so green it's so beautiful here and it's just so much fun to drive your cars here one of the best things we did with the RS5 was taking it out in the snow so towards the end of 2021 in North Carolina we had a couple snow days and you know we had to test that quattro so we took it out in the snow and the car was so good and so stable in the snow and it was just so much fun <laughs> but we also actually made a huge mistake here which was taking the AMG out in the snow. I think we got a little bit too confident with the RS5 and I knew this in my head. I knew that the AMG was terrible in the rain. I knew it would be terrible in the snow, but you know when you're kind of just on that high, like we were with the RS5 in the snow, we're like, oh, let's try it. Let's see what would happen. And the AMG got stuck in the snow and we actually had to leave it there for a few days till the snow melted, till we could move the car. So don't take your AMGs out in the snow. Towards the end of 2021, early 2022, the car market just started taking off. We were getting so many calls from so many dealers offering us insane prices on both the AMG and the RS5. So at first we weren't really interested. We were getting offers around like $61,000 for the RS5, but just to see what's out there, we decided to take the car to a local Audi dealership. So they actually offered us $63,000, which just happened to be our make me sell price. You guys know everything is for sale at the right price. So this just so happened to be our number that we wanted. So we decided to, make the hard decision and sell the RS5 because driving it for two years, putting 20,000 miles on it and making an $8,000 profit is just unheard of. Like that's never gonna happen. That's just a once in a lifetime event. A couple months later, I also said goodbye to the AMG because I got the make me sell price on my AMG. 
I'll link that video down for you guys below if you want to see the cost of ownership and what I was offered for my AMG that made me sell the car. Let me know if you guys have any more questions on the RS5 in the comments below and I'll do my best answering as many as I can. Also, I will be talking about a head-to-head -head between the RS5, AMG, and the M4, so I felt like this was important ownership context for you guys to have about the RS5. Alright guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you get notified when I post a new video. Give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!